So something that I wanted to achieve 12 years ago, which was hard to imagine back then, that an electric car would be faster than any combustion car uh, by a huge margin. I was always crazy about cars all my life, and that craziness got amplified by living in Germany at that time, uh, going to the IAA, looking at all the car shows, and I was just always wanting to do something with cars. So when I was 18, this was the easiest way to start racing. Do stupid things with a car like here. And of course, the combustion engine of that car blew up very soon, of that old BMW. So because I'm from Croatia, I read a lot about this gentleman here. I guess many of you recognize him. This is Nikola Tesla, who was born in Croatia. And his invention, the electric machine that we use everywhere today, like in the Porsche Taycan and all the other electric cars. Um, and I was asking myself at that time, why is everybody just building boring electric cars? So this was back in 2008, 2009, when electric cars were not sexy Porsche Taycans or Tesla Model S or whatever. They were like these ugly little boxes, if you remember. So when the combustion engine of my BMW blew up, I went into the garage and decided to build a car that actually shows that electric cars can be fast and exciting and not just environmentally friendly. Environmental friendliness should come as a consequence. It shouldn't be the primary goal. So I went to the racetrack and everybody was first like totally surprised because they didn't see an electric car on, a, on the road and let alone on the racetrack. And I heard all the jokes of electric cars being washing machines, like why did you bring a washing machine on the racetrack? If they can charge their phones on, on my car and stuff like that. And I had lots of problems at the beginning. But the car became faster and faster. I uh, worked on it every week, and then on the weekends I would race. Until in 2010, I won the first races, which was the first time electric cars won against gas-powered cars in the same categories. And then um, I was using it every day, uh, and learned a whole lot about that. And in 2011, then I broke five FIA and Guinness World Records with that car. So that was the grounding of the, the founding of the company, where initially I wanted to convert combustion engine cars to electric. But I realized quickly that does, doesn't make sense. You can see the battery here behind the seat, uh, and the electric motor was just you know, this small in where the gearbox used to be. So I realized the package doesn't work for, for combustion engine cars. And that's also what we see in the industry today. The car companies that didn't commit completely, that tried to uh, fit uh, uh, electric powertrain into combined platforms, didn't really make great products. So I decided to build a car from scratch um, that's different than this. This was the perception of electric cars 10, 10 or 15 years ago. And being from Croatia, uh, this is the auto industry in Europe. The, pretty much the only white spot you see where there is no auto industry is Croatia. So it was very tough to, to, do, this, to do this there. When I started a company, I was asking the University of Zagreb uh, if they could help me, and they said it's impossible to build a car in Croatia. The sooner you give up, the less people will go under with you. You might know this, but this is from another time, from Yugoslavia. So finding investors and this kind of stuff was the worst part. Uh, getting, uh, like, there was no venture capital funds in Croatia, no investors. So we had a very tough time. Like, we were sleeping on the floors, not going home for days, couldn't, um, couldn't pay salaries, couldn't pay uh, the rent and stuff like that. So it was a tough time, and it's a long story. We don't have time for that. But from that little garage, we are now over 1,000 employees. We are partners like Porsche and Hyundai. And uh, yeah, quite a, a crazy story behind us in this short time. And actually becoming an automotive tier one company and an OEM within 12 years after starting in this little garage over there. And over 1,000 employees now. And what's really important for us, we are creating this in Croatia. We are the best employer in Croatia, attracting lots of young talent. Um, yeah, so that's something we are very proud of. On one side, we are developing our own hypercars where we show what's possible, but then help other companies and work with other OEMs to develop new uh, electric vehicles. So in our own cars, we showcase our technologies because we can do whatever we want there. We don't have to ask an OEM. We can uh, be our own. Um, let's say, do our own requirements and do the, take the risk. And then we deploy that technology to many other OEMs that we are partnering with as customers and partners. So when Porsche invested in 2017 into us, that was one of the big milestones of the company. 
And uh, since then, Hyundai has also joined us, but also many others that are our customers. Now we are building a big, amazing new campus, probably the only automotive R&D facility without a fence. We want the public to take part. It's completely integrated in nature. We produce our own food there, uh, R&D and production for 2,500 people. And we recently launched our new car, the Nevera, 1,900 horsepower, less than two seconds, zero to 100, over 400 kilometers per hour, top speed. Lots of journalists already tried it. I hope some of you had the opportunity to try it as well. Crazy fast, crazy uh, performance. So something that I wanted to achieve 12 years ago, which was hard to imagine back then, that an electric car would be faster than any combustion car uh, by a huge margin. And this is actually the, com the culmination of my dream to start from a blank sheet of paper and develop a car that has better performance than every combustion engine car and uses really the advantages of the electric powertrain. 120 kilowatt hour battery pack, so like a 550 kilometer range. So good range, great performance. Now the next big step for us is also the combination with Bugatti, the joint venture that we have with Porsche. Huge, amazing thing if somebody told me this 12 years ago, wouldn't have dreamt of it, that uh, Volkswagen had and Porsche this huge um, uh, trust in us and responsibility giving us this 112 year old brand. So now we are this Rimac group with Bugatti Rimac on one side and Rimac technology, the B2B side of our business on the other side. And just the last slide from me, a little bit looking into the future. So, you know, a hundred years ago, how things were working, you had the suppliers who built parts for cars, the OEMs built the cars, they, they sold them to the, and to the dealers, and now they were sold to the owners, the owners took it to the gas station and service. Now, 100 years later, 100 years later, you have the suppliers again, maybe even the same. Maybe now, instead of a, I don't know, a carburetor, they make an inverter. You build the car, and it might be electric or, or combustion engine. And we all feel we are in this huge transition, that the whole industry is changing because of going electric. But still, you build the car, it's sold to the dealers, the dealers sell it to the owners. And this is basically the same. This part of the value chain doesn't change. I would say we are all staying in our comfort zone. And now what is coming, it's a whole different set of, of, uh, of uh, the, the whole game is changing and different players. So you have AI providers, the self-driving system providers, OEMs, ride hailing providers, and the users, not any more owners and no more drivers. So the OEM becomes different uh, the, the power in the industry becomes different. This is going to be the big change. And uh, yeah, I hope that many companies will, or that the companies that are in this industry now successful, like Porsche, will make this transition. We are uh, also working to be part of it. And as I said, electrification is the big sexy thing now, but I think that's just a small piece of a puzzle. There's a much, much bigger change coming. Yeah, thank you.